today I'm doing the coolant on my mini. I want to start this video by saying thanks for clicking on my video and look how dirty my car is. And I also want to thank Permatex for sending me some of their Fast Orange Grease X Mechanics Laundry Detergent. This stuff is a game changer. It, moves, it removes automotive stains and soils, eliminates fuel, oil, and exhaust odors, and keeps the washer clean of grease and oil. That's a big one. So I'm definitely gonna be using this stuff. I'll put a link in the description where you can check it out. So to do the coolant, first thing you want to do is get the radiator draining. And to drain the radiator, you need to remove this panel. There are three 10 millimeter bolts, I think they're 10, and a bunch of a bunch of uh, Phillips head screws going all the way along the plastic. And then this cover will just come down. And then, there's another plastic cover. It's just held on by two Phillips head screws. One over here, one on that side. And then, come up under here. You can see the um, the lower radiator hose right there. You just disconnect that and uh, then it'll drain out. And of course you want to have your basin ready to catch all the fluid and recycle it according to your local laws. So I actually moved the Mini up onto the trailer because I want it to be level or tilted forward in order for all the coolant to drain out, especially of the heater core. Just for your reference, these are the heater core lines. This one goes into the tank here. And there's another one under there. Pretty sure this one is the inlet. I'm just gonna pull it off from up here. And I'll let that drain out. And you wanna undo that. Should be about 1.6 gallons in there. I'll open this bleeder screw. See if that'll help it, oh yeah. Open that bleeder screw. And there's another bleeder screw. Right there. That's what you want to use to bleed the system along with this screw. And by the way, I have a wheel chock kind of under there. E brakes on, trailers attached to the van. And I have a jack holding the back of the trailer up just in case. So you don't gotta get worked up about any safety issues. If you want to do a real thorough flush, get yourself one of these flush and fill kits. It also has instructions on the back about how to use them. And if you think you uh, haven't gotten all of your coolant out, you can use some compressed air. Shoot it into this line. Don't use over 16 PSI. Make sure your cap is closed. You can also uh, shoot the. Comp you can also compress it from here, and make sure all your other lines are on. And of course, leave that one off.
So I got a gallon out using the air pressure and just draining it. If you want to get the remaining few quarts out, you can use a shop vac. I don't, I'm not even sure if the remaining few quarts are in this car. But I'm happy with the gallon. I'm going to fill it back up, put it all back together. And since I have already flushed it with clean water, uh, this is good enough for me. I like to use Peak Global Lifetime antifreeze. It's silicate and phosphate free. I like to buy the concentrated antifreeze. It does come in a 50 50 uh, mix where you do not have to mix anything. You can just pour it right into your car. But I have this empty bottle here, which I've already filled halfway with water, clean water. You should use distilled water if you just have some kind of city tap water. I have clean well water that's been tested and it's good enough for cars. Now just uh, give it a little mix. Get one of these testers here. Follow the directions on the tester. Four balls floating, that's perfect for what I need. Got the fifth one kinda in suspension there. There is another drain plug on the back of the block under the, um, under the exhaust manifold and like behind the starter, but it's, don't even worry about it, don't take that out. It's some kind of special bolt that you'll ruin if you take it out and you need to put in a new bolt. So, just letting you know, but warning you not to bother with it. Now you can uh, reattach all your hoses and reinstall your air box and then start filling. Now I'm going to crack both bleeder screws and fill this as much as it will go. Then I'll move it onto a flat ground and start it up, heat it up, and bleed the system. And add more coolant if I need to. I'm going to close the bleeder screws before I start it up. I'll reopen them once it gets a little warm. Leveled out the driveway a little bit there. It's mini life. Just from that trip down the trailer, this little tank is empty already. I'm gonna start it up and let it warm up. Once that happens, I'm gonna crack this bleeder screw and crack the other bleeder screw. And of course, while it's warming up, I'll monitor the level. When you crack this screw, you definitely wanna be here and pay attention to it. Otherwise, it can overflow, and your radiator and your uh, alternator is right down under there. So you don't want that to get wet. This little uh, eight-millimeter bolt here, the little bleeder, usually bleeds pretty quickly. 
right when you open it, there's going to be coolant coming out. Another thing is that you want your heat on high and your fan on low. Thermostat should be opening pretty soon. The thermostat has opened once you see the coolant coming out of here. Once you see a consistent stream of coolant flowing out of the bleeder screw, and when your coolant level maintains itself in the tank, you can start driving your car. It seems like when you rev it, the electronic thermostat opens and lets the coolant flow. I'm not sure if this car has an electronic or a mechanical thermostat. The newer ones are electronic, computer controlled. I basically got a gallon out, so I'm trying to get this gallon back in. I just have a like a real small amount left. Just be sure to check the level and top it off if you need to. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Thanks for being a subscriber. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe for more videos like this.